coming to you live from the garage. I'm ATP Dante, and this is Scene Analysis. Today we report to you live from a house show at the University of Southern California. There's a long history and spirit of innovation at USC. An esteemed university in California with notable alumni such as Randy Johnson, Neil Armstrong, Dan Bain, and of course, Paul McCarthy. Not to be confused with Paul McCartney, the guy who sang lead vocals for the Wings and then also had that, that other side project, uh, the, the Beatles is what it was called. But instead, the Los Angeles-based happy-go-lucky sculptist, known for works like his pile of feces in Switzerland, and of course, his Santa with a sex toy. Anyways, the USC Thornton School of Music is consistently ranked among the top programs in the nation. And as it exists in the heart of Los Angeles, there's definitely no shortage of music in the area. This particular show was thrown by a new up and coming promotion company called Scene Baby that's mostly ran by USC students. Before we talk about that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's send it down to Sydney and Maddie on the scene. We're raining We're fucking shit! Hi guys. Hey guys, this is Scene Analysis. Enjoy your piss. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, I just needed to tell you. Bye. And now this is half pipe over here as well. Somebody, I'm, I'm hoping someone hits like a kick flip or something, and I can get a cool picture. I smell some weed, so I gotta go. Two goals tonight: pay off the cops and find some weed. This is fucking Weatherfield. This is the fucking meteorologist. We're raining, fucking. Frank, we're interviewing you for scene analysis. Okay. The one and only. What do you have to say for yourself uh, about these allegations that I made up right now? Whoop did he scoop? Whoop did he scoop? Poop de scoop did he whoop? Poop de scoop de whoop. All right. This is Frank Sativa. Tell me how to get around. He's a 21-year-old all R&B artist from Wichita, Kansas. A few months ago, I interviewed Frank for my own music media company called Above the Bridge. He explained to me that he's really proud of where he's from and he has no intention of leaving anytime soon, even though he's not surrounded by a lot of music. Frank has found a ton of success in his career, but this begs the question, do you really need to still be in Los Angeles to make music work? I do think there's something to be said about living where the industry is, but with that being said, there are plenty of musicians across the country that make it work without being in LA. They sort of exist absent to the traditional industry structure and that works for them. We'll get to this, but the next artist that I'm gonna talk about also doesn't live in LA. And similarly to Frank Sativa, they've found a ton of success. I for one feel like the vast majority of music listeners really aren't concerned about where the artist they're listening to is from, and they're definitely not concerned about where they live. The average person consumes music on an incredibly passive basis. If you're watching this, you probably don't. But it's so easy to get in this headspace where we begin to think that we are the same as the mass of listeners. We're not. Most of us are music obsessives. There are thousands of different methods that artists all across time have used to promote their work but it consistently has felt like the ones that have found the most creative method to promote their music are the ones that are getting on. Frank Sativa found most of his audience online through TikTok and the Spotify algorithm. There isn't a singular way to succeed in music. If you're finding creative ways to promote your art, then you're on the right track. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Wait, where are you going? I have questions. Well, I'm here for the questions. Um, it's what? It's like you implied I was going because I took a step sideways. No, don't worry. Sorry, but I'm like. I'm actually perfectly happy with my Camel and Pacifico right now in the spot. I was gonna ask, what cigarettes do you smoke? It was Camel Blues for a while because American Spirits were like a high school thing, but like American Spirits suck. And you grew up. If you smoke American Spirits, it's gross. They they suck. My band name is Fox Tide. Yeah, we've been performing for a minute. Um, we were all like kind of jazz kids, playing standards and whatnot, getting into like Herbie. Hancock and all that. Oh, we, uh, we listen to the strokes and like Arctic Monkeys or whatever. This is Fox Tide. A surf rock band that's making gigantic waves in the Southern California rock scene at the moment. While researching this video, I noticed that Fox Tide had sold out a show last November at a venue called Soma in San Diego. Keep in mind, I'm not from San Diego. 
I had absolutely no idea how big this venue was. But when I looked it up, I genuinely couldn't believe how many tickets this band was able to sell. Soma's capacity is well over 2,000, and Foxside has just over 80,000 listeners. The fact that this band is able to sell that many tickets is absolutely mind-boggling to me. This again speaks to just how different success can look for every single musician. It is important to note here though, that Foxside does have a pretty pop in TikTok. They definitely have found some traction on there, but I still think the strength of their fan base comes from their localized community. Foxside is a great example of what happens when you're able to grow an ultra localized fan base first. The San Diego music scene that they're a part of right now is absolutely huge. I feel like I hear about a new band from that city almost every day. Whether it's a band like Blank Space or Sitting on Stacy or Benches or Rain on Fridays or Sands or St. Luna, the list goes on. Every single one of those bands that I just named is selling out shows in San Diego, but literally only one of them has over 100,000 monthly listeners. We're genuinely being sold a lie. These internet numbers don't mean shit. Again, success in music looks very different from person to person. It's so cold. I don't know the words. I'm a smoker, big smoker, but I was on Camel Blues for a while and then the gas station near our house only sells Turkish Royales. So I got on the Turkish Royales, but they're a lot smoother. This is a Turkish Royale. Do you want one? That goes down smooth, doesn't it? That's pretty That's fucking sick. smooth. And I'll be honest, I'm a smoker, big smoker. I'm a smoker, big smoker. I'm a smoker, big smoker. Cause I was on vapes for a while and like that's just weird. But when you get hooked, when you're 14, hurt. you can't really quit, so like, we're moving to SIGs type shit, right? What are your like top 10 ties? Probably this one. I have a pink one, and then like a blue snowman one. That one's kind of crazy. A uh, classic like black. I got a green one too, and I have a white one. That's like a cowboy like design type shit. I'm a smoker, big smoker. What does your, what's, what does your shirt say? Tampax. Damn, what size, what size do you wear? I get Pearl uh, XL. Pearl XL? Yeah. Okay. That's definitely a that's definitely a real What'd you one. Say? I said what size tampon do you use? Per I have, I get the Pearl XL tonight. Okay, that yeah. Size? Am I you would know I what you do? I can't believe this whole interaction. It's beautiful and we're being filmed, so yeah. like it's a documentary about your guys' friendship. Because if you can sing opera, you can sing anything, yeah, dude. But the thing is I've been smoking too much, so Gotta, gotta cut down. Nah, you're good. I smoke tonight, so I'm not gonna never, sing, okay? Never, I'm never sorry. cut the nicotine for the singing voice. That's true, I agree. I'm a smoker, big smoker. Live to create is here. We are living to create. This is what it's all about. I was in Ventura today, and then I, I'm looking through like their weird ass like shirts that they cut up, like their vintage, and I'm like, fuck, I hate all this shit. I turn to the left, Jesse Rutherford is just standing next to me. Whoa. And I was, I was all like, Who is that? From the like, Who is that? Big smoker. I couldn't tell if it was hey, him or not. The mic? And hey, he has. Hey, guys. What are you talking about? I have, I have no fucking. Clue. Jesse Weatherfield, what is Jesse going on? Where's Jesse? I am Jesse fucking Weatherfield. <laughs> this is the fucking meteorologist. We're raining We're fucking meteorologist. shit. What? Dude. He's From the neighborhood. Rutherford. 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 I, Rutherford. Rutherford. I totally knew that. I totally knew that. It's so cold. Now let me. I don't know the words. Is CJ really celibate? Is the question of the night. Yes. How do you feel about your song blowing up on TikTok recently? Uh, pretty good. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Like how crazy? Scale of like one to ten. Like a like a like a three. That's kind of mid. So what type of timing are you on tonight? Are you drunk? Yeah. Why do you think I have this mic in my hand? <laughs> Yo! Hey, motherfuckers, you want to be interviewed? How would you rate your piss on a scale of 1 to 10? It was a very lame piss because I didn't actually need to go to the bathroom. I was just standing here in line talking to people, and he was like, you can go to the bathroom. And I just froze. It was the shortest piss of my life. It was awful. It burned. A 3 out of 10. What would you rate it? I heard your lovely voice serenading me while I was peeing. I heard the stream in my ear while I was going down the drain. All I could think about was... What am I gonna rate this piss? It was good. It's a vibe tonight. My piss was like probably 11 out of 10. Hey, what would you rate? What's your name? I'm Krish. Nice to What's meet you. Name? My name is Maddie. Nice to meet you, man. How would you rate your piss? It was a solid piss. It was one of those ones where like, I didn't know how much made it in the bowl or not, but we're just guesstimating over here. 
life is about uncertainty, so I'm just embracing that aspect, you know. If y'all go pee after Krish, watch out. Yeah. There's, it's literally a slip and slide in there, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> what would you rate the show tonight? I rated it um, 11 out of 10. <laughs> a lot of thumbs in even square. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, that was no, 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 no. Yeah. I didn't even do a square. Guys, I think you're The two artists that played this show found popularity in quite literally opposite ways. Frank Sativa amassed his following on Spotify, TikTok, and Instagram, almost entirely online, while Foxside accumulated their fan base almost strictly in person. The point is, be wary of anybody who tries to convince you that there's a shortcut to a musical career. Find the best way that your music personally connects with people, and then focus on that, making the best art that you can along the way. Everything else is secondary. I'm ATB Dante, and this was Scene Analysis.